Hi, listen, everybody. Um, first of all, I just want to say how privileged and honoured I genuinely feel to be here. Um, Mick, your dad, seems a great man. I want to know all those things you told you not to say, Mick, later on. That'll be good. Um, when Brenda contacted me about being here today, the only answer I could possibly think of is yes. Because going through life, as Mick said, I think life can be quite tough. It has come straight, some straight roads, and then it has some very curvy roads, and then it has some very demanding hills. And how we get over those and overcome them, I think, forms us. Um, and I suppose I sailed through my life a lot, maybe until my early 30s, and then a sister of mine got cancer. And I suppose what it does do, it stops you in your tracks, it makes you relook at your life, it certainly makes you reassess the important things in your life. So I feel privileged to be in a room, hopefully many of you, are, you know, have myeloma, are coping with it, will overcome it. Interestingly, yesterday I interviewed um, this man called Shay Healy on my radio show for Sunday, and he's got something completely different. He's an illness called Parkinson's. But he was really reflective and very interesting, saying, you know, Miriam, the thing about life is, when it's going fine and when it's going well, really it's not very demanding. But it's what forms your character is when maybe something like myeloma comes along, comes out of the blue, grabs you by the throat. And I suppose it's how people like Brenda and then the wider family fight that, that forms us all. I mean, I spent a whole lot of my life talking to very boring politicians and <laughs> discussing NAMA. If I hear one more thing about NAMA. Um, and, you know, those things don't matter. What I think matters is, you know, how we all get on in our lives. And um, myeloma is, I think, a cancer that isn't as well known as other cancers. In my own opinion, I do the breast cancer launch and stuff, and everybody's aware of that. That's why I think it's very important that somebody like I, if I'm asked by Brenda to try and make it more public and more well known, well, that's something I can do. Being a TV presenter is an irrelevant job. It's only useful if you use it for good purposes, I say. So uh, I was very privileged to be here. She's a fantastic woman, Brenda. We were doing some photos outside with her and Emma, so I can see a whole generational thing between dad, Brenda and her. But I think in life it's true. It's if you can publicise something like myeloma and you know, get that into the public consciousness. Well, going forward, it can both help treatment, it can help fundraising, it can help everybody in this room to defeat it and carry on, which I know you all will. But more importantly, it can just make, I suppose, our government aware and put more demands for more funding to develop treatments going forward. Because so much of our money is spent on irrelevant things in terms of governments, isn't it? And, you know, what they need to do is put more funding into something like myeloma. Um, Brenda, you're a fantastic woman. Uh, I would think you should go to the moon. I think your dad's right. You've done everything else. <laughs> Croke Patrick, etc. Um, and I think he's right. It's so funny when he said that when you get myeloma, it was like it seems to encourage you to do a lot of things. And that's probably... Mary Ryan's job. Right? Yeah, well, <laughs> the Ryan Tuberty one is still vacant. So I could put a word and we'd be very, very privileged to have somebody you like it. I'll certainly make a commitment here tonight that I will manage to talk about myeloma between now and the next six months. Hear my words, I will do it. I'll get it in whenever I can. Probably. <laughs> so thank you for inviting me, Brenda. I can see you look healthier than anybody I've ever seen, actually. So like you're an ad for myeloma if there's such a thing. So it's my privilege to be here. Thank you for inviting me.